I've had my rabbits for nearly two years now and I feel like that journey of trying to figure out how to best take care of them has been like this never-ending rabbit hole you know when you learn something and then you start doing it and then you find out that was actually wrong and you need to do it a different way that's what the past two years has been like so naturally there are some things that i've said or shown in my last videos that i don't 100 percent agree with anymore so i wanted to address those for you guys today the first mistake that I want to address is from my fourth ever video, which was about hay quality. And I still agree with everything I said in this about what to look for in good quality hay, but it was just this one part here where I show some dark spots on some oat and hay that I bought and I said it was mold. But I've since learned that mold in hay is usually fuzzy in appearance. It's usually white in color, but can be other colors, but it's usually white and you can actually scratch it off. So the spots that I was actually showing here are what's known as rain damage and it's actually a stain in the hay itself. Of course you don't want to be giving your rabbits a whole batch of hay that's covered in these spots because it's not going to be very good quality but a few of these pieces mixed in with otherwise very good hay shouldn't be an issue to your rabbits. I hope. Don't hold me to it but that's what I know so far. Next one, rabbit diet. I have done quite a few videos on rabbit diet before since I'm not able to provide a proper grass diet, they get mostly hay, some pellets, and then the occasional treat. In that video, I was mainly feeding hay and pellets to my rabbits, so I got some comments from people asking things like, where's the veggies, where's the leafy greens, don't you know rabbits should be getting leafy greens every day? As I said, they do get it in treat quantities, but just not every day. The thing that's changed since I made those videos is the role of greens in their daily diet. So they used to only get it as an occasional treat, but I realized how happy the greens made them and how important that mental enrichment was for them. So I started experimenting with their diet. I did more research and learned about the importance of variety, like really switching it up so they never get too much of the same thing. And I was able to make greens part of their daily diet. I'll do a separate video on how their current diet looks, but just know that they do get greens every day now. This next one is kind of a minor one, but it is about their litter box. I have tried so many different litter setups. I've done separate boxes, enclosed hooded boxes, those sifter kinds of boxes, but there was a couple videos about nine months ago where I built that little wooden house for them and the litter box in there was like this kind of storage container type of thing. But a couple people commented saying that that litter box was too small for two rabbits. And I completely agree. That box was too small to have two rabbits in. So shortly after that, I upgraded them to like a large storage tray thing. So they have a lot more space now, plenty of room to turn around and forage, pick out their favorite bits of hay. And they're a lot happier now. So the last one is about bonding and I know that most of you who watch my videos watch them for the bonding one so I'm sorry to tell you there is something that I need to correct which is my stance on stress bonding. The idea with those is that the rabbits will seek each other for comfort and then they end up bonding through fear but that's not really something I wanted to do with our rabbits. I wanted to use non-stress methods so that's why we chose table bonding. Bonding is stressful enough as it is and just intentionally making your rabbits more scared so that they see comfort in each other is quite risky and can be quite unsafe for bunnies. The difference with these methods as opposed to stress bonding methods is that we're not intentionally trying to make the rabbits afraid so that they see comfort in each other. But what I came to realize is that unless you have a pairing who's like a love at first sight pair, there's inevitably going to be some level of stress because you're putting two rabbits together who don't want to be together and rabbits stress so easily. No matter what method you're using, they're probably going to be a little bit stressed anyway. I kind of talked about this already in my rebonding video, but the way I feel about it now is that when used correctly, certain stress bonding methods can help some very aggressive or fearful pairs just to help get them over that hump so that they can start learning to be okay around each other. So those were the things in my past videos that I felt like I needed to correct. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with those old videos because I don't want someone to watch those and get the wrong kind of information. So maybe I will just leave them up for like another week if you want to go back and watch me be wrong <laughs> in my old videos. I'll probably delete them at some stage or redo them or something. 
Oh my goodness. But me just jumped onto a basket and now she <laughs> Oh poor girl. Okay, I better give these guys some food because they are waiting for snacks. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry if I misled you. I hope this video has helped and I will speak to you guys next time. Bye. I think I talked about this already in the rebonding video. Oh, look at she's cleaning Turbo's ears. So cute. Oh, oh, sorry. Did I distract you?